All right, a heads up for folks in Pierce County, Pierce Transit, delaying service uh, for some time now. They're going to continue updating that on social media. And earlier this morning, King County Metro announcing that they're suspending all services until 7 a.m., though it is now 725, so we need to double check if that service has started uh, once again because the conditions are still treacherous. Oh, and I'm actually hearing from producers now that it has continued to be delayed, so we will look for updates. Yeah, They'll give us sense. another update at 10 a.m. All right, now let's take a look at these photos sent to us from our own Adam Gerke. This is what his neighborhood is looking like uh, this morning in Kirkland. And uh, when our traffic expert says it's not safe to drive and uh, maybe just call in for the day, you should probably listen to him. That's exactly what he did this morning, and uh, we are going to chat with him. Adam, are you there? I am, and you know, Bill, it's it's accurate. Uh, this morning, <clears throat> and I will say that uh, I was talking with Abby yesterday, and she looked at me as I was leaving the station. She she looked at me from the weather center. And she goes, "I'm really worried about tomorrow," and I said, "Oh." Okay, you know, and I, and and I, I took her seriously at that point, uh, and, but at which point I also realized, oh, I better start thinking contingency plans here. And uh, we've recently just moved, and so I still have all of my broadcast gear in boxes around the house. I had to go rummaging through that around 3:30 this morning. That was awesome. But what I can tell you is that <clears throat> sheets of ice have still blanketed a number of surface streets in and around the Puget Sound area. We've seen that in Auburn. We've seen that in Kent. We've seen that in uh, Factoria. We've seen that in through uh, drivers as far north. I'm just now getting reports of trouble in through the Marysville area, southbound I-5 nearing 528, a collision that's taking up part of the roadway. So we're seeing problems stretching across multiple counties here and taking out uh, services also in Kitsap County now, hearing of difficulties uh, in and around the courthouse. The courthouse shut down for the day. Waste management shut down for the day in Kitsap County uh, and other transit services all being impacted. This has really been one for the record books. I haven't seen one quite like this, I think, ever. Yeah, it's 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 been a while. Uh, I remember we had a, a horrible ice storm uh, about 10 years ago and mm, uh, yeah. a lot of power lines down. And that's an issue this morning as well with the ice forming on the power lines and tree branches and so forth. Uh, I was going to ask you about the elevated roadways, the bridges, because I drove across 520. That was probably the diciest stretch that I dealt with uh, on my white knuckle drive in this morning. So talk about why that is, why the elevated elevated roadways yeah. and the on and off ramps in particular are really dangerous in these conditions. Yeah, really difficult in the fact that the cold air gets underneath them and then the de-icer that may have even been spread on that only works to a certain temperature. So while that cold air is still underneath it, the whole roadway just remains completely frozen underneath and then you get this rain that hits it and next thing you know, bang, you've got this another sheet of ice. So sure, coming up 520 right at the Portage Bay Viaduct, just as you start to make way towards I-5, that becomes incredibly treacherous because of that. Uh, we saw that last year around uh, the same time of the year uh, where the Portage Bay Viaduct turned to ice and became incredibly impassable. Uh, I would also be concerned about the Ship Canal Bridge or even say some of the other bridges where it's just uh, metal grates like uh, parts of uh, the the Aurora Bridge used to be, or even also on, uh, say, the University Bridge or the Ballard Bridge. Uh, looking at the Narrows Bridge, that might be another point of concern that, had, that has pavement to it, but there still may be also some of the uh, the points where you're just driving on metal grate where that gets even worse. So yeah, bad scenes altogether. Bridges, overpasses, on ramps, off ramps, uh, places that have stayed shadowed or only saw just a minimal amount of plowing. Anything that saw snow and still had snow, the, that now that this rain has settled on it, that has become ice as well. So uh, like my neighborhood here sheets of ice in all directions and Adam just expanding on that I mean some people are deciding to make the trek we're showing them the main arteries but talk about how how it was that you decided to take a look around your neighborhood to see if you could even mm -hmm. get out yeah, uh, basically had to go as far as the edge of the driveway to realize, wow, this is this is terrible. And that was at 3.30 this morning. Uh, then I went back out closer towards 6 o'clock. Things were even worse because as this rain has continued to fall, even where I had stepped, where I had kind of squunched the snow down that was already starting to turn to ice, uh, those footprints had filled in with ice. So it just got worse and worse. So from, I'd say, the 3 o'clock hour this morning until still where we're at now, it continues to just get worse. Bad news. All right. Adam Gerke, live from the home office for us. We appreciate you joining us. Yeah.